Wildlife biologist Jessica Haynes of the University of Alberta was conducting routine field work in Yukon in spring 2014 when she heard a commotion in the trees. A male red squirrel had intruded on a nest of newborn pups, attacked one and killed it, right before her eyes. I was excited, on the one hand, but also kind of horrified and fascinated to be seeing this all at once, Haynes said. Haynes had observed a phenomenon called sexually selected infanticide, behavior previously undocumented in red squirrels. In years when food was plentiful and female squirrels produced two litters of pups, male squirrels kill the offspring of their rivals. Their motive for infanticide is a second chance at fatherhood, Haynes said. The offspring are not his own, so he is reducing the success of his competitors, said Haynes, a postdoctoral fellow in the Alberta School's Department of Biological Sciences. And by doing that, He's also hoping to increase his chances of fathering offspring. Haynes was the first to observe and document the behavior in red squirrels. Her research was published Thursday in the journal, Ecology. After witnessing the attack, Haynes used genetic testing to identify the killer. Haynes also tagged the animals to monitor pups and gather evidence. Many of the pups had injuries consistent with bite marks she saw on the dead pup, Haynes said. Mast years and shifting male behavior squirrel infanticide is linked to fluctuations in white spruce cones, the main food source for red squirrels, Haynes said. It only happens during mast years. During those plentiful years, female squirrels can have two litters instead of one. Females breed in spring and cones mature in fall, so the squirrels predict future cone availability when they have the second litter, Haynes said. Despite the prevalence of sexually selected infanticide, more squirrel pups survive in years of food abundance than in other years. The behavior is more common among species that live in groups and experience more sexual competition, Haynes said. We were surprised to see this behavior in squirrels, because they live alone in separate territories and do not monopolize a single female during the breeding season, said Haynes, who conducted her research in partnership with the Clue and Red Squirrel Project a decades-long field study of red.